I'm pretty sure that's not going to work. <laughs> she cannot be a pampered princess that just sits in the cockpit. Hey guys, I am here today to try to answer the very tough question of how to get your wife to go cruising. And it could be wife, husband, boyfriend, all of that. Wife is just significant other. Usually it's one person who has the passion and um, drive to go cruising and usually has a little more experience boating or sailing. And they're trying to reluctantly like drag their partner out to their boat so they can go out cruising and often it doesn't work. <laughs> um, so I am going to try to answer today that very tough question and I've pulled from a lot of resources um, because I really want to get some answers that work, you know, some real trusted um, real life examples of ways it's worked for other people. Um, and you may know that it's, uh, it's not the easy answers, there is no miracle fix. So a lot of this may be what um, you just don't want to hear because you've heard it before and it's hard to do. That probably means it's right and that's how you're going to have to do it. So, <laughs> But I've asked a lot of people, I've even asked myself the tough questions and I've asked others. So I'm going to do my very best to give you the resources and the answers to get your wife out there and you're not just going to hear it from me. My heart was in the right place. I want this yeah. to be a comfortable experience. I want to recreate that life on land. I don't want my wife to worry. I want to feel safe. I want to have every doodad and gadget. But what that ends up doing is dedicating my time as the engineer to keeping this this beautiful vessel to yeah. tip top condition. And then if she's not as into that as I am, which and is she, a very typical scenario, exactly. she's bored. And First, as early on as you can, have your wife be an active participant in the boat. That means getting off the helm and putting her on the helm. Put her in charge. So I'm just going to shoot. Your first question was, what makes me so nervous or hesitant uh, about going sailing with my family? And looking back, I would say I had four things. The first was finances, the second was space, the third was the baby, and the fourth were the dogs. The main thing, remember this, this is the most important aspect of that, is your wife or your girlfriend or your, your significant other can never be a passenger. She's a crew member. <laughs> crew member. One of the most repetitive answers I heard from the more people I pulled on this was she must be a crew member. She's got to be a part of the crew involved in the boat. She cannot, not, says Pam Wall, be a passenger. Um, so let's hear from Pam Wall. I've introduced her a couple times before um, on this channel because she's been a huge inspiration to me. Pam is a woman who actually um, spent her honeymoon crossing the Atlantic Ocean. So if you want to talk to someone who is on board with cruising from the beginning, she is definitely one and she will tell you why because the rewards are infinite. Um, so Pam Wall is a cruising and sailing consultant now uh, and as she says, uh, available for help, questions, answers, email her. She's out there and wants to be a resource for people like you who want to go cruising. So Pam, what do you have to say to these gentlemen or women who's trying to get their husbands to go? And you've got to let her assume responsibilities and teach her together with you or go to a sailing school to do the right thing and she will feel so empowered that she'll say you can stay home i'm going to take the boat out you're the one who should tell them that that's what you were great you okay. never never let phil is always the captain but you weren't a passenger oh, from day one darling. yeah i was part of the crew did you get the biggest kick out of the, in, the, in the world on that's what I told him. I was like, it's such a confidence boost when I learn it and I do it right and he's proud of me. And I can exactly. see it, you know. I'm going to screw up. That's okay. He screws up. I think women are just afraid to screw up more. We get embarrassed by it. We get defeated you know why? by it. Because the men scream and shout at them. Yeah, I know. My well, big point is no yelling. <laughs> but yeah. I know, but yeah. you can't tell him that. And another really cool, empowering thing to me is steering the boat. I mean, I would never let Andy touch the helm. And he <laughs> loved it. He loved it. He probably did. And then, for sure, don't take her out in bad weather to begin with. Yeah. You know, let her get used to the boat in all kinds of good weather and really love it. And teach her that healing 
is not scary. Healing tells you what the boat can handle. It tells you how the boat's performing. It's important. Yeah, yeah. But you know, the biggest problem is the, the guys don't give it the women credit, you know, they're sitting there cringing in the cockpit, and they should say, here, steer, you'll see what I mean, there's nothing wrong. Grab a line, yeah, I know. That teach feeling, him, teach them how to start the engine, and, yeah. and, and how to retrieve, throw a cushion over the side. Go yeah, to, do drills, man. you guys will probably have fun doing it, you know. That's yeah. kind of my advice, but it's definitely, I want to tell them something that will help, you know. Well, the, the problem is that they, they really don't want to hear it, you know, they probably all know that, but they're sort of afraid to do it, but tell them it's really, really empowering to know what you're doing and to enjoy it and if they want to talk to me tell them to call me up okay tell them to come <laughs> sailing with me on this game bay it's our three months in the shipyard some days were horrible they were tiring they were expensive they were um, uncomfortable and frustrating but that was the coolest thing for philip and i to do together like have those days where we'd go there and just fight and beat our head against the wall and not solve the problem, you know, and keep at it the next day and the next day and then finally get something fixed. Like it's, it's important to our relationship and I think it's a huge reward that many women you may not see out there. You think it's just gonna be hard, you're gonna struggle, but you do it together and you overcome it together and that brings you closer. It's, it's a really cool thing. I also had another friend who actually reached out to me. It was kind of fun um, when he saw my announcement of I'm going to do how to get your wife to go cruising uh, video. He was like, all right, I need to chime in on this topic. Uh, Linus Wilson from Slow Boat to the Bahamas, who recently cruised uh, down through Florida. We met up in Pensacola when he was here and then down to Panama City and Ecuador. And he actually uh, cruises sort of part time with his wife at home and she joins him on occasion. So they have a different setup that may work for one of you as well. He's written a book called um, How to Circumnavigate uh, the World Part Time. So that's also an option. But he sent me a fun little video clip of how to help to get your wife to go cruising. So let's hear from Linus Wilson from Slow Boat to the Bahamas. Hey everybody, this is Linus Wilson of Slow Boat Sailing and the Slow Boat Sailing Podcast. I love Annie's channel. When she said she was doing a video about convincing your wife to come on the sailboat, I had some ideas. First, as early on as you can, have your wife be an active participant in the boat. That means getting off the helm and putting her on the helm. Put her in charge. If she doesn't have any sailing experiences, take classes with her. Both of you take them together. Don't give her instruction on how to sail the boat let the instructors do it. And we're a much better sailing couple because of it. Still, my wife told me she does not want to go cruising, but she was willing to join the boat when we crossed the Panama Canal and went over the equator. Do you pledge allegiance to Neptune, God of the sea? Yes. You slimy polywog. Thanks for the day, folks. That is the ink of the Kraken, the great giant squid. Not a Diet Coke, but it does taste like Diet Coke. And another person I was uh, very honored to have on the channel, uh, something I just tried something new to collaborate, and I reached out to, I wanted to find a wife, you know, like I said, boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever, a significant other that's already out on the water cruising so she's out there doing it knows exactly what it's like and it is lazy gecko Brittany Brittany and Jeremiah have been on their Allbird um, living and cruising along Florida's coast um, for quite some time you guys are probably familiar with them they put out some awesome family oriented videos and I wanted to hear from her you know what it's like for her actually living on the boat you know and actually doing this with children and what motivated her to do it and perhaps maybe um, what she feared herself in doing it or what she sees other women what they fear and so I asked her to put together also her thoughts on this. So thank you, Brittany, for taking the time to put this together so we can hear from a woman who is actually out there cruising. Tell us how awesome it is. Hey, Annie, it's Brittany from Lazy Gecko Sailing. I have received your three magical questions. So as far as finances, I was worried about the budget going from our normal daily budget, I guess you could say, down to our much smaller budget. And then as far as space, the size of the boat, I was worried from going from a large home to a smaller boat. And then the baby, you know, how are you gonna have a baby on a boat? 
And then the dogs, I would say that I was most worried with them and the heat, only because we have English Bulldogs and it is hard for them to handle heat. And the second question was, what was my biggest fear? I would say that was crossing an ocean. Now, we have worked to help with that fear. We've done things like gone to school, taken classes, we've learned the boat, talked to many people, uh, learned the weather patterns. We've done a lot to help ease that fear. We haven't crossed an ocean yet, but I would say we're well on our way to being prepared to doing it safely and, you know, securely. As far as finances, your budget, your larger budget, also downsizes with your life. So it is doable, it is affordable. As far as space, you have to create the space for the person or for the animal. If you take your time and you do it right, it'll benefit you in the long run. And then as far as the baby, we have done wonderfully with him. I'm amazed. I created a baby room, a safe place for him when we're sailing, when we're underway. We purchased things such as uh, car seats and little chairs that we can strap down. It's been amazing. The dogs, we put in an AC unit that we can use at anchor when we're sailing or motor sailing around and then you know if you're in a marina you can use it no problem. And then uh, crossing an ocean, which was probably the scariest for us, we have thought about bringing extra crew on board which has eased the nervousness I guess you could say because I can take care of the baby while the crew is helping Jeremiah sail. And that's what we've done to really plan and get everything in place. We've taken our time, we've eased into it, and we're doing it. We love it. It's been nine months. We plan to do the entire world. We cannot wait. There you go, Annie. There's the answer to your questions. Thank you so much for including me. I love your videos, and I cannot wait to see you out there with us. Bye. <laughs>too I mean <laughs> uh, you don't have to blow dry your hair ever and you don't have to wear any makeup uh, you don't have to really worry about what you're gonna wear every day you just throw on a bikini like that's sort of part of the course um, so it's very comfortable to me in that regard that you don't have to do all these kind of things you have to do in a normal day-to-day -day life like you know wear high heels and get all dressed up and go to an office and no you're on a boat in the sunshine you know and yeah you're gonna have to go in the engine room and pull off a hose and get all nasty and greasy but that's fine you jump in the water and <laughs> you just wash it off and you make a cocktail and move on it's a to me it's just a much much more fun life you know it's got a lot more rewards and I mean uh, hello what woman in the engine room doesn't look sexy men can I hear it yeah. <laughs> oh you get fit oh my gosh I don't think anybody out there like uh, on a sailboat is you know obese cruising it's just you can't be <laughs> yeah you're super active so you're not worried about like oh i didn't make it to the gym today because blah 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 i mean up and down those stairs every day is your gym you know it's cool and that you don't have to um your life isn't rigid in this boring kind of monotonous treadmill structure it's just crazy adventure and physical activity every day so that that part's just taken care of you know and you're healthier and you're happier I was actually very lucky to stumble across um, this next sort of guest we have on here. It's kind of fun. The Annie Show. <laughs> um, Nick O'Kelly. And it was actually Pam who had told me to check out the Women and Cruising uh, website for some good resources on this topic. And please do check out the video description below and my blog post for today um, that has this video. There's so many links and resources and books and articles and stuff that I've taken the time to pull together and put down there for you. One of which was an article I stumbled across when I went to Women in Cruising, written by a man, which was interesting. And it was six mistakes men make in sharing their sailing passion. Um, and I found it very insightful in that it was, um, you know, he didn't take full blame, but he's like, here's where I messed up in pitching this to her in the wrong way. And what I learned from that and how I did it better the second time around because Nick's someone who tried to go cruising with his wife, he says the wrong way, and then he fixed those problems and they went the right way and had a phenomenal time. So Nick is an author. Uh, what I found when I read the article down to the bottom, he has a book <laughs> and it's called Get Her On Board. If you ever needed a more perfect book for the topic that we're talking about today, um, it's very efficient, effective, and just a great guide um, for some perfect dead on tips that will probably help you, like I said, pitch this to her in a better way. What was really cool though is I reached out to him when I found the book 
you know, I've got to talk to you. You have to be on my video. And then I found out he's written another book with um, Pat from Bumfuzzle, which we all are very familiar with, um, called Live on the Margin, and it's about making money um, remotely. So he's going to be a huge resource for me. I'm just glad I stumbled across him. And Nick's got a great philosophy for how to start with the principles and the shared um, ideas that you and your significant other have about the life you want to live. Start there as opposed to the boat. So I'll let Nick explain that to you. Take it away, Nick. What I was doing was I was falling into the same trap that I had the first time. And that trap is the thinking this adventure for you and your husband or you and your wife or whatever the combo is, mm -hmm. thinking it's, it's, it's about the boat, right? thinking it's about the destination. Good it point. is not about the boat. It is not about the destination. What fuels you as dreamers, what fuels us as dreamers is the dream and the values that it takes to put that dream together. The values happen to do with having lower impact on the earth, you know, being yeah. ecologically minded. Yeah. Uh, not feeling as, as drawn to consumer society, this idea that we just have to get the bigger TV in the car that's just another year newer. Those values that we shared had nothing to do with the boat. And the fact that we're, we're uh, you know, we're not religious people, but we are spiritually drawn to nature. Both my wife and I look up at the stars at night and we feel something. We feel something that money can't buy. And those sorts of things that we share, the fact that we're just kind of trippers on this, on this rock flying through space, looking up at other stars, that sort of thing really fuels the dream. That fuels the type of experience that we want to have together and in partnership. And that has nothing to do with whether the boat is shiny or oxidized, or the rig has got cutter rig, you know, or it's just a sloop, one hole or two holes. That foundation, those shared values are way more important than any of this stuff that we're sold. You know, this yeah. you gotta have this book or this experience. So when I approached it from that way, it wasn't a conversation about a boat anymore. And she was actually like, well, you know, a boat would be a really great way to spend more time in nature and be mobile yeah. and not cost a lot of money and our ecological footprint would be smaller. So she was as much into it as I was. And then all of those things that we learned from the first time around about not having the complications, not having the water maker and all that stuff. That is super smart. So you come to her with the things that you share that have nothing to do with the boats and the sailing. I think that's really going to help a lot of my guys. I had told, my thought was to tell the ladies, and you'll have to tell me if Megan would kind of agree, is that they think because they don't know how to sail, they'll have nothing to contribute to this lifestyle. And I was like, it really is like 20% sailing, maybe, maybe 10, and then it's 90% all this other stuff like are you mechanically inclined are you rugged do you like to go outdoors are you tidy are you organized you know are you small and flexible i was like there's so many strengths that you don't realize you're going to have that your partner's gonna be like oh my gosh i'm so glad she's xyz and none of those will be a good sailor no i mean a lot of the lifestyle has to do with just being resourceful okay here's a very typical cruising problem um our clothes are dirty we need to get them washed. That's a typical now, problem. Typical, you know, in our house here, it's like, okay, well, okay, you take the basket over to the washer, <laughs> put that in, on a boat. It's a adventure. little adventure. Yeah, it has nothing to do with sailing, and there's a million of those. And actually, yeah, you, you, you just, uh, I don't know if you spoiled it for a lot of the cruising magazines, but sailing in and of itself, I mean, it's a dangerous pursuit, and you definitely need yeah. to know what you're doing, but it's not like it's that complicated. It's, it's really like, not. It's really you pull not. that sail up, <laughs> make that? sure that you're pointed far enough off the wind, you know, that the, the wind gets into the sails, and then you you figure it out. And but yeah, the, yeah, I've the told sailing, of them. I'm like, I can teach you to sail in an hour. I cannot teach you how to fix the engine, how to rerun a hose, how to double yeah. hose climb. I'm like, I can't teach you all the rest of it, but the sailing is really... I also found my conversation with Nick to be so insightful and engaging, I created a full 20 minute video from our complete interview that you can watch by clicking here, or there's also a link in the video description below.
like what's the worst part about it like what do you hate about it when do you get the most nervous um, and the most worried and of course I think everybody's gonna know what I'm gonna say right yeah docking everybody hates docking um, I hate docking absolutely uh, my heart rate I get, goes up I get nervous I run around like what Philip and I call jackrabbit speed um, and we've had some of our you know more intense kind of exchanges you know where I feel like I've messed up I get embarrassed and angry with myself or maybe he does too and he doesn't handle the helm right you know and it's it still is difficult so I'm just gonna jump right in and give you an example because we're doing this to show you all out there that you can do it too we're not perfect we're not better um, we make mistakes too and it's just part of it um, so let's just share it this is an actual example um, just from a few weeks ago, this is not like when Philip and I first started cruising. This was about a month ago um, when we docked uh, near the shipyard. And it's, it's not pretty. I actually hate to watch this. But I do it for you. Ready? Roll that fabulous footage. Whichever way you want, the springer is probably best. Yeah. Okay. Hold on, hold on. You can make the stern go out. Let me give you the. Let me give you the stern line. Yeah, we should have talked about the way you're using that springer. That wasn't quite what I expected. I gotta get the valve. Okay. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. I'll get it. I mean, if the springer is off the boat, there's no danger. Everything can be slow and smooth. I don't know. Let's we'll figure it out another day, though. Figure this out today. I'm not saying it's anybody's fault. It's just that's an example of how that can go wrong. Um, but we did have what I think afterward you'll see is good communication and that there's no yelling, okay? There's just, guys, if you're yelling at your chicks, they're not gonna go out on boat with you, okay? <laughs> just let's get that out there. No reason to yell other than if you need to be heard from like the bow to the stern. Um, so we just don't do that. Philip and I never do that, and it's not part of our relationship, and that's, I think, is a huge benefit, a huge bonus. Um, you have to really get along with someone really well to want to get on a small boat with them and travel the world. Um, so you're just going to have to have that first and work on that first. Um, so he didn't yell at me, you know, if I did it wrong by jumping off with a springer and like, reining it in like a faster on horse, you know, and so I, that was probably my fault, and I brought the nose into the dock. Um, but, you know, he's very patient with me and, and just said we need to talk about that and do that better next time. You know, it takes a lot of respect. It takes a lot of understanding. It takes a lot of empathy. These are the same things that make a healthy relationship yeah. go anywhere. On the boat, it seems to be more amplified because there's no place to escape to. You can't storm off. The values transfer from one thing to the next. And what's left over are just a lot of easily figure outable logistical issues like honey is there enough money in that account to put over in this account you know and mm -hmm. booking flights and it's just but our values are, are shared and integrated and it could be this catamaran or that catamaran or right. in the Caribbean or in the South Pacific it's just it won't matter but on that first trip and what spurned this first book was just a lot of, you know trying to uh, trying to make it about a particular vision I had for what cruising would be. So that's a lot to take in. I hope you have found a lot of these suggestions incredibly helpful. Um, I think they're very insightful. It's good to hear from all sorts of voices, you know, people that are hesitant, worried to go out with legitimate fears, people that are out there doing it and love it and why, and then also male perspective of how he messed up, he thinks, in pitching it the first time. Um, so it's not just me, you know, it's a woman who wants to go cruising and this is all great, 100% fun all the time. It's not that, you know, it's, it is kind of complicated. 
but it's the most rewarding thing that I have ever done and I will never trade it for anything. It changed my entire life and uh, motivated me. I was on the verge of you know, transitioning my life to something better. You know, I didn't quite know what that was, but I knew kind of like what Nick said, the philosophies of my life that I wanted. I wanted a smaller, less is more life. I wanted less big house, mortgage debt, consumerism, all that. You know, I wanted more time to travel and adventure and go. I knew that even before I met Philip, And I was right in the crux of all that and cruising just became the answer. Do please look at, uh, like I said, the video description it has a lot of links to resources, websites, articles that will help uh, Nick's book get her on board. It's definitely one that's been out there and has been helping a lot of men who want their women to go cruising or women who want their men, same thing. And um, so definitely check out those in my blog post in the video description. And I hope this has been helpful. I hope uh, all you women and men out there who are hesitant to go cruising, oh my God, just go. So get out there, get on board and get your wife, boyfriend, husband or significant other on board too. Go and cruise the world. Want more of this really cool content? Great. Go to havewindwilltravel.com where you can follow on the blog or get free e-copies of my sailing books and consider becoming a patron for access to my exclusive Atlantic Crossing footage and help us help one of you get out on the water too. Get inspired and get on board.